We are not sellers of drugs, not mere manufacturers of medication. What we make 
are memories. Memories that may not have been there to be remembered had a life not been lived. We make people better and we save lives. And we make time too. Time we gladly give to those who have learnt what so many of us have forgotten. The value of every single day. The preciousness of every breath, of every heartbeat. We make tears, tears of thanks for the release from pain. And then there's hope, the hope parents have for the happiness of their children. You see, we don't have a strategy, we have a cause. We don't have a vision statement, we have vision. We see a future where good health is expected, not for the few, but for the many. And we don't have consumers or a target market. We have Alison, Seb, Topeka, and Zunaid. And that, that is why we are not a healthcare company. We want people to live a long and healthy life. Some call it human care. We call it caring for life. Hi everyone, and welcome to our Sipla Graduate Connect Day. Today is all about connecting with you and inviting you into our world of work so you can get a sense of what it's like to be part of the Sipla family. I remember being a grad, um, being ambitious, uh, eager to tackle the world and I remember walking into a big corporate for the very first time and being part of a project team and uh, being so eager to please uh, that I hadn't learned the boardroom lingo yet so I hadn't mastered any of the language in the boardroom and I was there to take notes in a meeting one day and uh, this corporation was taking over a huge call center so uh, of course I was attentive listening taking notes furiously and the project manager said um, guys we need to, uh, these guys need to come to the party. You know, we need to get them some bells and whistles to gain their buy-in and, uh, and sort them out. And of course, I was confused. I wasn't sure what I was meant to do, but afterwards I went to him and I thought, okay, I'm gonna ask him about the bells and whistles and the party that I'm supposed to arrange. So I went and I said, okay, so you know, where do I get these bells and whistles and for when do I arrange the party? And of course, I became the brunt of that joke for a long, long time to come. Um, but that was all part of, of great lessons learned and I think that that was just a big part of my journey, learning fast and furiously, making those mistakes because that was part of the journey to success. So um, that was part of my graduate journey and when I look back, I think you know, there have been many wonderful moments like that that have actually built me to where I am right now. So fast forward to the present, um, right now I'm in this amazing company I'm uh, an L&D professional. I head up learning and talent for CIPLA, and I'm part of an amazing team of high performers. Uh, this is where we strive for excellence, um, and I absolutely love it. So if you think that you are one of those you know, highly motivated, excellence-focused um, people who are willing to learn fast, willing to fail fast, willing to collaborate, innovate, and create the CIPLA of tomorrow, then this is the place for you. Here we are looking for people who are change makers, who are culturally aware, who are socially intelligent, who are um, savvy, digitally savvy, digital natives, game changers. And if you think you're one of those, then keep watching.
more about Sipla and our history, my graduates and I are going to show you a little sneak peek behind the scenes early morning look at what our Sipla offices look like. Follow me. Good morning, Mr. Have a nice day. Thank you. Cheers. Guys, look, it's spare. Good morning, spare. Uh, producer, not now. I haven't had my morning fix. Anywho, let me go get me some coffee. Follow me. So this is where some of the magic happens. Can you please give me a cup? Girl, please, make your own coffee. <laughs> okay guys, now let me take you on a sneak peek around the office space. Here we have the IT slash BI department. Hey Chris. Hi. Here we have medical and the science-y part of it. Here we have the demand learning team. We have creative, the creativity team. Here we have marketing. As you can see, there's a lot of color and fun stuff around the marketing department. Here we have SAP. This is where I was born and bred when I came to Sipla. Over here, we have the RA department. Ooh, that. And hey, Nambuso. <laughs> <laughs> Good in you. Hi guys, so I'll be taking over from now. This is where the man with the plan does all his strategic planning. And then over here we have QA, that's quality assurance. This is a small team that actually backs the man with the plans. Then over here is more QA. Now this is where Supla survives. Like this is how Supla survives, that's the coffee stations. Over here, we have communications and Supla Foundation. Okay, let me take you to the kitchen. So when you need a break from all the craziness inside, we have the main kitchen and the view is splendid. And this is the main boardroom where all the magic happens. And finally, we have Emerald. This is where, if you're successful, you'll spend a few weeks of your time in the program. Hi, my name is Ayanda. I studied a become accounting degree at the University of Johannesburg. And my name is Ashley, and I studied industrial psychology at the University of the Western Cape. When I first applied to the grad program, I wasn't quite sure how my degree would fit into a pharmaceutical company, let alone how it will fit into my business unit. To be honest, in the first few weeks, I heard a lot of science jargon. Slowly but surely, however, my fellow grads and I began to understand how all the pieces fit together. One way to look at it is like this. Imagine a sports team. Every player has a designated role but all work together to achieve a common goal. Well, that's how organizations work. Groups of people work together to perform a specific function that helps the company deliver its services or make its products. In SIPLA, these groups are called business units. To help you understand a bit more about the organization and where your degree fits in, we shall take you through some of SIPLA's business units. Firstly, SIPLA is a pharmaceutical company producing affordable genetic medicines of superior quality. To do that, the organization needs to do things such as understand and be up to date on the pharmaceutical and medical landscape, anticipate which products to produce next, and perform a host of strict administrative steps to gain the necessary approvals to produce new products and monitor existing ones. These tasks and many others are taken care of by the business unit's medical and regulatory affairs. Next up, 
These products need to be made, and this is where business units such as engineering and manufacturing come in. CIPLA has manufacturing sites across the globe, two of which are situated in South Africa. The first is Mirren, located in Benoni, Gauteng, and the second is CMM, which is located in Durban. Going hand in hand with this process is a quality business unit that undertakes both of quality control and quality assurance. Over to you, Ash. Once the medicines are made, they need to be distributed. Sipna South Africa has a state-of-the-art distribution center located in Cape Town. The center receives about 5 million units and dispatch about 4 million units per month. Business units such as supply chain, demand planning, and customer services assure that these units get to the right destination on time whilst maintaining good warehouse and good distribution practices throughout. But all of this would be in vain if nobody buys the products, right? To take care of this, we have the commercial sales business unit. This unit is made up of the sales team and they educate, promote and inform healthcare professionals and pharmacies about our products. Working alongside them is an additional department of knowledgeable experts, training and developing the sales teams. Supporting the sales effort is the marketing and operations business units. And these consist of departments such as creative, communications and events. Grounding off the operations team is the facilities team and they make sure the everyday things in the office work. The coffee is ready, the meeting rooms are pristine, and health and safety practices are in place so that those of us at office can focus on our jobs. They're also, in my opinion, the friendliest bunch. <laughs> but don't tell my team that. On that note, who is my team? Well, I am part of the Human Resources Business Unit. And not only do we contribute to the business strategic thinking, we also take care of all things employee related, be it recruitment, labor relations, payroll, or talent management. We support our company's most valuable asset, our people. Another business unit that supports all other functions of the business is that of finance. And under this umbrella, we have the additional supporting roles of the IT and business intelligence units. Working closely together with finance is the business development team. And this is where I come in. We increase C plus revenue and profits by sourcing new products and acquiring existing businesses. To finish, we want to mention a very special business unit, the Sipler Foundation. But rather than telling you about it, we will show you. Foundation phase education is one of the main challenges in South Africa. My name is Martha Makura, but I'm known as Mama Martha. When I started coming here, there were no crashes. The children were just roaming around. 
It was very devastating. I thought, where am I going to take my children? I knew I had to do something. That is when I opened the preschool. This is now the 22nd year. We started with 10 children and now more than 20,000 children going out of our hands. We are not victims. We are just a happy community that can take care of their own children. What makes the Sharplift project unique is our modular infrastructure. We repurpose old shipping containers. They're insulated, wired, we have deep cell lithium battery backup, uh, which the unit can run for up to three days off the grid. They're air conditioned, so everything is GPP compliant. So whenever we put down the infrastructure, we can put down one, two, three, five, however many, however many pieces we need for our basic nursing service and any other auxiliary services that we have to put into a hub. The second unique thing about using modular infrastructure is when you deploy it, if there's a medical need with urgency, we can deploy and set up a, a hub like this within a week. So there's, there's instant deployment and as soon as the unit's finished, with the, the already charged battery backup, you can switch on the unit within an hour once deployment is complete. And we've already had a few emergency cases where we've had to get people into the unit, assist them and get them off to your clinic in an ambulance as quick as possible. We've already had life-changing interactions with this community of whom we are now part here at this, this Belleville Hub. Hi everyone, my name is Kay and I'm a CIPRA graduate working in the Human Resources Department. And I'm Jade, working in Salesforce Effectiveness. We have prepared a small overview to run you through CIPLA's graduate development program. Your first job as a graduate can shape your entire career, so you want to make sure it's the right one. You have worked hard to obtain the knowledge and skills of your chosen field, and now you're probably both a little excited and anxious to take the next step into the world of work. This is where the CIPLA graduate program comes in. It provides a selection of curated learning experiences as you enter the world of work. So, what is the program about? What can you expect? Well, allow us to take you through it. Number one, we know what you don't know. Yes, that's right. We get that there is a massive transition about to take place from your structured learning environment where you know how things work to this completely new work environment where things don't always come with a manual. You will be wondering questions or have questions like, what is email etiquette? How do I manage my diary? A tax number? Geez, what is the tax number? <laughs> These are but a few questions, and that is why we provide a full month of onboarding where we intentionally work on those critical workplace competencies to have you settled in. Number two, it is more than making photocopies and coffee. <laughs> In our graduate program, you will be recruited into roles that fulfill real business needs. So you'll be doing real work, have real responsibilities, and work on key projects, not only as part of the CIPLA South Africa family, but with global collaboration and exposure. Number three, there is time to grow. The program stretches over 24 months and is a competency-based development program. This gives you time to settle in, find your feet, make mistakes, reflect, and grow from them. This process is facilitated through ongoing goal setting and developmental feedback. Number four, there is time to show. Throughout the program, you will be supported by the learning and development and talent team. And along the journey, we will provide you with an opportunity to showcase your growth to your peers and your managers. We also engage the lifelong learner in you by taking all our year two grads through a level four project management course. The program is hard work. It is demanding, but it's a perfect opportunity to kickstart your career. So before we venture into details on how to apply, 
why don't you hear from our fellow grads who will tell you how it's like for them to be Sipnut grads. Hi all, my name is Nombo Songobane and you might remember me from an earlier video clip. Video clip. So, as you've seen, I have neither the face nor voice for TV, so I'll just try to be in your faces for a little while. Um, right now, as you probably can tell, I'm extremely nervous, but I'll try to contain the nerves and let's keep the show rolling. For this session, so the objective essentially of the session is to just create a space for grads by grads. And um, yeah, so I'm going to ask my fellow grads a few questions about their study to work transition. And you, the audience, can, will also have a chance to participate. Firstly, you can post a question you might have in the chat section, and we will see how many we can answer. And then secondly, I would like you to open a new browser. Um, the web page is menti.com. That is M-E-N-T-I dot com. And we will use this a little later to get you involved. And the code is 7029376. So that's 7029376. So whilst you do this, um, let's meet our panel of graduates. Starting on my right, we have our handsome gentleman. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Winfall. I studied bioprocess engineering at the University of Cape Town. Hi all, uh, my name is Ferdosia. So I studied a BSc honors degree in medical microbiology at UKZN. Hi all, I'm Jade and I've done my BCom degree in business information systems at the University of KwaZulu Natal. And Onke Metze is dialing in online from Joburg. So we have many qualifying graduates um, that could have been part of this panel, but we decided to keep the numbers small just for social distancing case. And yeah, we've removed our masks just to facilitate with the discussion. So I remember the first day I came to Sipla. I was extremely nervous, even more than I am right now. And yeah, so my first question is, what did you guys fear the most about starting your job and entering into the world of work? Thank you. I'm the lucky one. <laughs> um, so I think with me, it was just, you know, coming, being a grad, you don't know if you're going to fit in, you know, in the world of work. Are you going to be good enough for your role? Will you live up to the expectations and that that sort of thing? So that was a really nerve wracking experience. You know, you just don't know this. And then I felt, yeah, induction really helped with that. So that was my biggest fear at that point. So I think when I first entered the grad program, my biggest fear was the unknown, not knowing what to expect and being a, a natural introvert. I just, I was also afraid of people. And I'm originally from KwaZulu-Natal, so I moved to Cape Town just for the graduate program. So that for me was very daunting at first. And yeah, so that was my biggest fear. But I mean, in the end, it all turned out okay. <laughs> so yeah. Right. So my my biggest fear actually was full time adulting. Um, you know, like um, from university, you are not completely adulting. You know, you still have your parents as a safety net, and now when you start working, um, you literally need to do everything you on your own. You know, so you need to be able to manage your finances properly. You need to be able to provide a roof over your head. You know, you need to be able to just um, just make sure that you do everything for yourself. Um, and so I think that was my biggest fear, being able to, to just transition from being a part-time adult to a full-time <laughs> adult. So, yeah, worked out at the end. <laughs> All right. Um, so our second question is, it's been a very strange year, I think, for everyone, like, all over the world, and with many challenges, and one of which is that um, working from home, and for us, like we started sort of our first month, we actually started in March. And then um, just when we're about mm -hmm. to be done with the induction program and we're about to actually come into the office, that's yeah. when it's like, no, 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 go back yeah. home. Yeah. And so we had to learn how to work from home and it's a new job. And it was just 
very crazy very crazy to say the least so what is the biggest mistake you have made or the most stressed you've been since starting on the grad program so we're going to start with our lovely lady in joburg Onke Metze. Hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> so I'm I'm not going to get into my biggest uh, mistakes because wow, like if we can start with that, then we're gonna to be here for the next 24 hours. So I'm just <laughs> because working in, in a sales job is is very difficult. Um, I'm one of the graduates from 2018. So we were the first sales graduates. Um, Winful can attest to that. So coming into into the job, it was very difficult to train us as both sales graduates and being full time employees on the field. So it's always been very, very difficult. And um, my biggest <laughs> stressful moment, this one is actually a funny story. Um, it was during a very, very stressful day. I walked into, into Woolworths uh, trying to buy lunch. So I was standing there by the cashiers. I ended up putting my wallet on top of the counter, taking the food and leaving the store without paying and I left my wallet at the back and the cashier lady was so so defeated she didn't even know what to say like she literally waited for me to take a few more steps until she can call me out to say um excuse me ma'am you took our food and you didn't pay and you left your wallet so what's going on? And because the store didn't have a lot of people at the moment, um, at that time, um, it became the biggest joke ever. Like the, the other cashiers were asking me, what's wrong, my child, are you good? Why are you so stressed? You look good, but you, you look stressed at the same time. But <laughs> it was literally the, the, the worst day ever and I will never ever forget it. Um, yeah, so. That is me being a sales graduate. <laughs> anyone else um, wanting to go? Do you want me to tell yes, the story? Please. <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> okay, so this one is actually like a fan favorite here. I know a lot of people here, they wanted me to tell the story, even though it's such an embarrassing experience for me. So it was my first week when we came back after lockdown and I was still getting used to, you know, the driving all the time things. So I was in the parkade downstairs and I was reversing out and I grazed another vehicle. Oh my God, it was like the world was coming to an end for me. I was in tears and I was panicking. I had no idea what to do. But by then I'd already built up quite a nice relationship with my manager. So the first thing I did was I just, I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And I sent him a text and he was just like, calm down firstly. And he told me, you know what, send me pictures of things like what happened and I will sort it out. And he did, but it, despite that, I was still a nervous wreck. I was just in tears the entire afternoon. And I remember the next day we went to report it and he was just like, um, you know what? You can either sink or you can swim, but I'm not going to, I'm not gonna allow you to sink. And that just showed me that, you know, I, I, I'd only known him for a few months, but he believed in me so much and that made me believe in myself. So that was definitely a turning point for me. And from there, I was just like, you got this girl. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my story. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I seem to have forgotten our lovely audience. So, um, if you go on the Menti page, menti.com page, um, you yeah so please can you just enter the following number so seven zero two nine three seven six that's seven zero two nine three seven six and then you will see a few options given to you please select just one to submit and yes that is question one so what do you fear most about starting your first job and entering into the world of work Focus feel feared most. I can't see from here. <laughs> I can't see from here. 
So what did I fear most about starting my first job? Okay, so I think coming from an academic um, sort of like background, I just felt the need to always prove myself, you know, like I never wanted to seem as though I did not know what I was talking about or doing um, because it's quite competitive and you always need to seem as though you are on top of your game. And so that's what I feared starting work that um, I'm still quite young. I'm new in the industry. Um, I'm really wet behind the ears, you know, so are they going to take me seriously? I'm working with people from different age groups, you know, um, people that have been in the industry, people that have experience. So I think at, um, at some point I started feeling as though my contribution might not be <laughs> as as valuable because it might seem as though ah, still the baby who are you you don't know what you're talking about um so that was my biggest fear but then i got here and then i discovered that um, um the environment is one that allows inquisitivity if that's a word you know you don't need to always seem as though you always put together you know everything um you know show um you know, the eagerness to learn, ask questions. Um, there's no such thing as a trivial question or a stupid question. And um, don't insist on trying to know everything. So I think that's, that yeah. was my um, experience when I started. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's just the main thing that I've noticed as well and just in chats with, like, other mm -hmm. grads. It's just you want to prove why you're here. Yeah. Like, that I'm not here by mistake, essentially. Mm. So it's always that thing where now just got to assess Mm. But thanks so much. Um, okay, question three. So for my next question, let's just focus on the positives. And so what do you appreciate most about the team that you're in? And to our audience, we would like to know what you consider the most important factor when selecting a company to work for. So who would like to go, Miss? Okay. Oh. Um, so what do I appreciate most yeah, right, team. about my team? It would definitely have to be support. I think, shout out to SFE, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, these guys have really been a backbone to me. Um, every time I've, I wasn't sure about something, they always make me feel comfortable to ask questions, to say, it's okay to not know. You're a graduate, you're learning. This is what the program is meant for. So I think just having that there from my manager, I've had two managers that have just really been that, that pull of strength for me academically, uh, mentally, emotionally, you know, they really are there for you. So it's definitely the support from my team, the support from my manager has been incredible. Um, yeah, just to add on, I think, um, you know, as a graduate, um, there's a lot of people that want to help you. And that's what I've noticed as well, that they they want to see you succeed, you know. Um, and that's one thing that I picked up with um, all, all the teams that I've been involved in while here, um, that they want you to lean on them. You know, if you have any questions, they want you to ask, um, you know, if you have any inputs as well. I, I think... Um, we, we tend to think that, um, you know, our managers are responsible for managing, yeah. you know, while we can also, in a way, manage up, manage up yeah. you know. So um, as, as a graduate, you bring um, quite a lot of theoretical knowledge, you know, um, and I think there's a place for that um, in the team as well. And I think my, my team provided a space for me to be able to express that, you know, so, yeah. And like the one thing I realize is that as a grad, you also have to take the initiative to because like you said that people are always willing to help and like inform like inform you about things, but you also need to actually show them that I am interested in learning this. Like this is what I've done, this type of research I've done, or like any background information that you found. And then okay, based on this, am I right in this? And then they'll also add and be like, oh no, maybe you just went a bit too far left or whatever like reel it in this way so yeah it's like yeah the teams have been great and then our audience has found that their most important factors was mainly meaningful work because I mean you always want to know that you're you're adding value mm -hmm. somehow so your input is actually you know valuable and it's like yeah. people actually want to know what you're thinking what you you know and mm -hmm. then another thing is development opportunities and I think here we've had so many development opportunities, like um, in terms of like value inform information, sorry. I found myself like with some presentation that I did 
and then it was sent to the CEO. And then I was like, mm-hmm. well, it's okay. That, that, that's my work. Like, mm-hmm. So it was just, we get a chance to grow and explore ourselves and just become someone essentially yeah. within our careers and stuff. So that's yeah. been really great. Um, thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, with my team, I think it's so diverse. We, we're really the weirdest bunch I think you could ever find. But it's wonderful because yeah. we just, you know, bring so much. Uh, there's like the creativity is crazy. Everybody has different ideas on how to do things. And it just sparks you. You're like, oh, my word, I never would have thought of doing something in that kind of way. So I think that's I love that about my team. Every mm-hmm. time we have a meeting, I just go home thinking, wow, like there's just so many other ways of doing things. So mm-hmm. it's really mm-hmm. mind boggling when you think of it. And yeah, definitely the differences in the creativity is what makes my team the greatest, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Your team is the greatest. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's take it back to the beginning. We all went through the onboarding program um, before actually starting our jobs. What was the biggest takeaway from this part of the program? And once again, lovely lady and Josie, Onke, I think let's start with you, please. Um, the onboarding program, sure, what a journey. Um, and my biggest takeaway from it was that it generally solidified my place in the universe, not just at work, but generally in life in the universe, because we were in Cape Town for three weeks and an additional two weeks for the product training for sales. We were the first sales graduate. We were the first group to be on the program for two years. We also had two psychologists, James and Anwar, coming in almost every single day and giving us sessions. So that's how much CIPLA invested in us as individuals. Literally, there was, I think there was one moment when we were all going back to, to the hotel at Manhattan and we were sitting on the minibus and it was dead silent for the first time ever. Even me, I wasn't talking. Imagine me not talking. That's like the, the biggest, I don't know <laughs> what on earth. So everyone was just so quiet and so silent because we are contemplating on everything that's been going on and how that has reshaped our lives, how we have refound ourselves and our purpose and everything else in the process. So ever since then, I was totally in awe and I will forever be grateful to to CIPLA for giving us that, that kind of opportunity in life. Because even for me on a personal level, I came out of there knowing that in the next five years, in the next 10 years, I'll be doing this and that and that. What I'm studying now, I figured out during the onboarding program because we're coming in with different degrees and we're going into different roles and moving forward as young people would want to upskill ourselves. And at that moment, I had already figured out that, okay, no, after from here, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. And from there on, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. So our onboarding program was the bomb, guys. <laughs> I think we got <laughs> the bomb diggity of <laughs> all onboarding programs. So yeah, that's my biggest takeaway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So one thing that I took away, I think, um, onboarding was the whole concept of human care, um, caring for life. And I think just um, beyond CIPLA, the industry itself, that's when I was like, you know what, actually, I think I found I found my niche. You know, this is definitely where I, I want to be. Um, but going back to, to the onboarding and CIPLA, I think the whole providing antiretroviral treatment back then for less than a dollar per day when you know it was quite exclusionary in terms of price that for me was it was quite big you know and i was like this is definitely um where i want to be because values align you know providing um quality affordable health care is something that i want to be a part of you know so um how 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 we were introduced to to that and the story behind all of that for me kind of like still resonates with me and that's the one thing that i'm i really took away with me you know so um this is a movement that i really want to be a part of you know so um yeah that's that's one thing that really t- i took away from the onboarding experience yeah thank you so much and i think the main thing is that um as you guys have pointed out that 
you sort of you learn to become an active participant in your own like career progression and not only in terms of career but like as you were just saying with like the ARVs and you know that what you're doing you're not just coming into work just to you know um just like basically end up like adding to the bottom line mm. but you're actually making an impact like your yeah. work is something that is making a difference to the greater humanity yeah. so it's definitely like it's something that, mm, mm, so. mm, mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um for my last question and you mentioned this earlier on i personally have tried and tried and tried again to find the up unsubscribe button mm. from adulting <laughs> and I'm yet like the link just never works. So I like find it and then I'm, I keep pressing. But anyways, um, so what's been the biggest surprise about having to be an adult now for you guys? And what is your go-to thing when work or life overwhelms you? And for myself, I tried to be in res for the longest of time, so I wouldn't have to deal with like electricity, the electricity <laughs> bill in Cape Town. Like, but anyways. <laughs> So to our audience, please, could you also just share um, with us in one word your go-to thing when life gets crazy? So be it, um, be it activities, be it anything, just just one word. And then you guys can go. Let's start with okay. Fifi. We haven't had your voice in a while. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Uh, I think mine would be, you know, the importance of a work-life balance. I didn't really understand that. And I thought it's a pie-in-the-sky kind of idea. But when you start working, you realize the importance of that. Mm, and, you know, mm, mm. you've got to take out time for yourself to do things that, you know, make you happy. And um, always remembering, you know, where you came from and keeping yourself grounded and things like that. So for me, it was definitely like the work-life balance thing, yeah. guys. Like, it's, yeah. it's quite important yeah. just to make sure that you're doing the best that you can. You need to have that balance in your life. And the thing that I would do, you know, to like unwind I think um, it's definitely to go for a drive like to watch the sunset because I think it gets my head out of the sand kind of and you know you realize there's like a bigger scheme there's uh, a whole beautiful wide world out there and yeah it just makes you feel like you're part of something great and no matter how hard life can get you always try and find the beauty in it so yeah okay. <laughs> I think for me, summarized in one word, the hardest thing about adulting has been furniture. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that has been crazy. I mean, people my age are actually out there buying Converse, Nikes, <laughs> Adidas, and I'm out here trying to find a couch <laughs> on Gumtree. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so that has been absolutely your quite a learning curve, trying to adult and trying to furnish your own apartment, fridges, couches, stoves. Ugh. But yeah, but I mean, we take it as it comes. It's been an incredible learning journey. You'd know not to meet someone at eight o'clock in the night <laughs> in dodgy areas of Cape Town. But other than that, yeah, it, I think that has been a huge learning curve and I'm truly grateful for that. Um, so <laughs> like I said, your full-time adulting is can be a bit tricky, <laughs> can be the pits. Um, but one thing, um, you know, that uh, the learning curve, adulting and everything is how I get roped into conversations with my parents now or the elders at home. You know, it's kind of like I'm seen now, you know. <laughs> I've become that adult now, you know. So um, whenever there is something happening at home, um, you know, they, my, my, my input is also valued. They, they'll call me, they're like, actually, we're thinking of doing this or that or mm. this. Mm. And what do you think about this, you know? And so that's when I was like, I ah, know, actually, yeah. I'm within. <laughs> I was like, it is, it's done. <laughs> you are not considered a child anymore. You're not considered, a, you're considered um, a participating adult, you know? Mm. Like, so mm. that's when I was like, yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's, it's I real. <laughs> I can't run away anymore. <laughs> So when all of that happens and I get overwhelmed, um, my go-to place, it's the wines, you know, like, <laughs> not, not in a bad way, but I mean, I, I like nice things. So I do spend a lot of my time at wine estates to enjoy the, because I, I feel like for me, wine is more than just drinking it. It's, it's also an experience. art, you know, it's an, it's an experience, yeah. exactly. So that experience um, sort of like distracts me from everything that's a bit you know, I'm um, shaky in, in life, you know, so um, that's my go to that and hiking as well. So, yeah. 
When do you mean to go hike? Oh, we just <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> files, <laughs> files. <laughs> Yeah, but the main thing um, that our audience has found that, that helps them is just breathing. I've learned the power of breathing, guys. I used to think it was overrated on some meditation, like, what is that? But now I actually actively take steps to come within myself and just think, not think about anything and just try to, like, you know, get the oxygen flowing. And also music. I live by music I, every day. Like, if you come by my desk, I will have my earphones in just listening to my music um, I don't have one I listen to everything like actually if you listen to my if you check out my playlist I go from like gospel to like hip hop to like rap so mm. literally yeah, everything yeah. as long as the song is just like you know it speaks to yeah. yeah 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 so yeah I'm glad we have like some sort of way of having an outlet because like you said we do need to just yeah. remove yourself from work because like you can't always be like work, 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 because yeah. you will crash and burn, and that's and not. And I think also, not. as sorry, um, as also, as as millennials, we tend to be a bit impatient at yes. times with ourselves, foremost, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, we need to sort of like take a break from that as well. Don't overthink. Don't overstress. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. Don't try and control um things, and also things will not happen now. You know. Um. So yeah, we also tend to, me. yeah. You know. We need to allow things to happen naturally, you know, progress naturally. So um, that's one thing that I've learned to, to stop doing as well because I found that it stressed me out very quickly and a lot, you know, being impatient and always mm. wanting to control um, things, you know. So um, I do agree in saying that we need outlets that help us not be as anxious and as stressed mm. in our daily activities, you yeah. know. Yeah. Alrighty, so now it's time for some audience questions. Um, can I have my first question, please? Thank you. So how long did it take you before you started feeling like you got this? So how long was that? <laughs> do, you <laughs> do you feel like you got this? <laughs> um. <coughs> It took me a good year, I think. Mm. Um, I mean, like even finding my, my feet in my role, in my position, that took me like a good six months, you know. Um, so there was a lot of learning and unlearning that had to happen. Mm. And I don't think that happens overnight. Mm. It definitely ha it doesn't happen over three months as yeah. well, you know. Um, you leaving one space and you transitioning into another, you know, so there's a lot that you need to sort of like adjust to. Um, there's quite a few traits that you have to leave behind and there's quite a new traits that you have to sort of like, you know. So for me, that all took a year. And um, by the end of it, I think I, I was, I was, I had, I had my head on yeah. <laughs> my shoulders yeah. properly, you know, so it's, it's definitely not, like I said, be patient with yourself, yeah. you know, it's not going to happen yeah. overnight. Um, but I'm, I'm solidly within now, you know, I think. <laughs> I think uh, just as Winful said, you know, it's an ongoing process. You learn every day and guys, all adults are just winging it. Like <laughs> you will learn that and you grow every day. So there's some days where you think you solidly, you know, have it and then you learn something new and you're like, oh, wow, I never thought of doing things this way. So it's an ongoing process, but definitely, um, yeah, it took me, I think like three or four months, you know, into it. And then I was like, okay, I'm kind of getting the vibe of this now and I, I know what I'm doing. But as I said, every day is like a learning curve. You just learn so much every day. Um, so there's someone asked, is, I see there's a psychometric assessment. Do you get the results? And we all, I mean, you always want to know what they're using to base, you know, the psychometric assessment on. And the answer is yes. So you actually get taken through your results during the program and you get it explained and yeah. So yes, you do. <laughs> um, Question three, how many grads are taken on to the program? So it feels like, how many were we? We were like 12. We but were 12, yeah. yeah. And, then and then you guys were? Mm. So there was like 10 of us. 
depends on the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, you get handpicked um, for 12 to 15 grads each year. And yeah, so it's semi exclusive program. <laughs> but it's all are welcome, of course. Um, but yeah, so it's 12 to, to 15, but depends on the number of positions that are open in that particular year. And then, unfortunately, unfortunately, oh, one more. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> um, so is the program only based in Cape Town? And that is no. Um, only the induction part, so the first month, will be this side and head office. And then afterwards, you, you people get shifted off like, <laughs> to, Dur to Durban and Joburg and also here in, in head office. So, yeah, it's just Durban, Joburg and Cape Town. What is that something great for you? Um, and even when you get shipped off to other <laughs> cities, <laughs> um, I can assure you that you remain in contact with, um, mm -hmm. with, with the group that you were inducted, mm -hmm. um, inducted with, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that I really valued or I appreciated that my group and I, we still very much yeah. in contact, yeah. you know. So yeah. those 10 to 12 people that you're going get, to get inducted with, they're going to become your friends yeah. like you're gonna become quite close and i don't know about your experiences but yeah we we were we were quite close and i enjoyed everyone that i met so yeah and definitely with that like we're always in chats like we even have whatsapp groups with the people that we were in because it's as you said it's like a very small group and in the in the first month we're in each other in each other's faces a lot <laughs> and so like it or not you become affiliated with each other and then actually it becomes something more than that like you take active steps to just make sure like checking up on each other and all of that um so unfortunately we have to wrap up but thank you so much for your questions. Um, we'll take a look at the ones that were posted and make a frequently asked list and share these with you. So we'll share the information of where to find this. Uh, but before we go, I have one last, 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 last question for the panel. If you, go, if you could go back and speak to your about to graduate self, what is the one thing? So just one piece of advice you would give yourself. Haven't heard your voice in a bit. <laughs> 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 Guys, um, if I had to go back, I would just tell myself, don't be afraid of the unknown. Just embrace it because regardless of where you end up, you're going to turn out well. And yeah, that's pretty much yeah. what I would say. I would say, you know, don't be afraid of failure. There's always that kid who tried to ace, you know, be the mm. number one at everything. So yeah, just don't be afraid of failure. You're going to learn so much more from that. So yeah, yeah. That, that's my takeaway. And fail is first attempt mm. in learning. Yeah. Very, Very well. Well. <laughs> Um, So I say to myself that you are worthy. You've come this far. And I mean, like, you really have come yeah. this far. You've yeah. accomplished quite a lot to get to that point. So that just goes to show the potential um, that you really have. So you are worthy. Um, and do not be afraid of uncertainty because you have to start somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so just take up every single opportunity, take up space and yeah. cement yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and the last voice that we haven't heard in a while, Lady Onkies. Um, hi, guys, once again. Um, so my take out would be my favorite quote, which is, life begins when you move out of your comfort zone. And I was completely out of my comfort zone at that time. And I thought I was just being thrown into the deep end, but I had no idea what amazing things life has on the other side for me. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much guys to you guys too for just providing such insightful like advice stories. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys as well for listening. And now I'm going to hand it over to our CEO, Mr. Paul Miller, with his message to you. After which we will end this Connect session by explaining exactly how to apply for the grad program. Thanks so much. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Paul Miller and I'm the CEO of CIPLA. I recognize that over the last many years you've been investing heavily into your future. 
and it has not been easy. It's taken a lot of change, a lot of adjustments, but the time now has come for you to make a choice and to start to build your own career and to move away from your studies and start to build a life. You've got many opportunities and you've got many options available to you. And maybe today CIPLA could be one of those. So let me tell you a little bit about what the organization stands for. It stands for Caring for Life. It's an organization that believes that everyone has a right to better health, that everyone has a right to live long and a happy life. And we've been pioneering and driving this ethos for many, many years across Africa and indeed across the world. If this resonates with you, if you feel you want to join the CIPLA family and that you want to be part of this journey of caring for life and making a difference, then please do click and do enter and participate in this graduate program. We believe the graduate program is so critical to our future and we look forward to bringing in diversity, diversity of race, gender, skill sets and experiences that's going to further enrich our organization and make sure we're capable of reaching our clear objective that none shall be denied healthcare. Thanks for your interest and I wish you well with whatever you choose and may you have a long and very successful career with much happiness. Welcome to the CIPLA South Africa Graduate Skills Development Program. Hi, I am a CIPLA graduate. We all are! We are going to tell you how to apply to the CIPLA Graduate Program. The application process comprises of five stages. At CIPLA, we make people better and we save lives. We see the future where good health is expected, not for the few, but for the many. CIPLA was founded by Dr. Hamid in 1935, and over the past eight decades, we've worked tirelessly to ensure access to quality, affordable medication around the world. When you're ready to submit your application, visit the CIPLA website. Select the Careers tab and click on the Graduate Opportunities button. You'll also notice a CV template and more information on how to submit your application on the website. It takes roughly 15 minutes to submit your application. The CIPLA South Africa LinkedIn page also contains more information. After you've submitted your application, CIPLA will review all the submissions. If you've been shortlisted, we'll invite you to complete an online psychometric assessment. I would suggest you choose a quiet place so you can concentrate and a time where you can complete the assessment without interruption. Once you have completed the psychometric assessment and your results meet the required criteria, you will then be asked to complete the next stage. This involves submitting a self-recorded video. The information needed for this video will be sent to you well in advance, so you will have plenty of time to prepare. We will only review videos that meet the specified criteria, so be sure to follow the instructions carefully. Our graduate recruitment team will review your entire application, your CV, psychometric assessment, and selfie video, and will be in contact if you've made it through to the next stage, which is the virtual interview. If you're shortlisted, we'll schedule an interview with you. We will send you all the details for either a face-to-face -face interview or how to connect for a virtual interview. If you're shortlisted as a potential candidate after the interview, we may ask you to complete a work-related assignment that is relevant to your field of work. If you are successful, congratulations! We'll contact you either by phone or email. We'll provide all the necessary information ahead of the induction program. The induction program gives you an opportunity to learn about the business, meet your manager, and get ready for the world of work.
we'll invite you to complete the graduate induction at our head office in Cape Town. We will share all the necessary details about travel, transport and accommodation. Now you have all the information needed to apply to the SIPLA Graduate Skills Development Program. All the best with your application. We look forward to meeting you and hopefully becoming colleagues in future. Let's go. 